fire and fury, Wolf's first revelation of the Trump White House delivered just that. Selling over four million copies, it portrayed the President of the United States as childlike and semi-literate. The book shaped a view of the Trump administration as chaotic, despite some criticism of Wolf's methods. Trump called the author a total loser and the book really boring. But that didn't prevent him summoning Wolf to his Mar-a-Lago enclave as he nursed his post-election wounds. Joe Biden now has the lead statewide in Pennsylvania. What emerges is Trump's determination never to accept the reality that he lost the presidential contest with Joe Biden. And it confirms Trump's sympathy for protesters who marched on the U.S. Capitol in January, storming the heart of U.S. democracy in a bid to derail the peaceful transfer of power. But while Trump has gone from the White House, his baseless claims about electoral fraud continue to dominate the Republican Party today. Well, earlier I spoke to Michael Wolff in his first UK interview on the book, and I started by asking him why on earth Mr. Trump allowed himself to be interviewed again in the wake of the Capitol riots. We're, we're, we're in the land of, of Donald Trump. When my first book came out, he... Um, he tried to sue me. That would be the first time that a, a sitting president has tried to sue a, um, um, a, a writer, uh, tried to stop the publication of the book, said he had um, never met me when, when he had, in fact, invited me into the White House. Um, um, and then, and I thought, okay, you know, I guess, I guess um, that relationship is, is over. Um, but then when he heard that I was doing uh, this this new book, actually someone recounted the conversation to me that he was told that I was doing this book. And he said, oh, that guy gets ratings, let's see him. Um, and he immediately uh, had someone invite, invite me down to Mar-a-Lago to, uh, to sit with him, to interview with him and to have dinner with him and Milani. Now, you, you talk about him telling you that he was uh, determined to walk to the capital, but at the same time, um, he very quickly also within the book reveals that they're not our people. I, you know, I mean, I mean, remember, Donald Trump exists in the moment. There's not a previous moment, um, and there's not a moment to come. It is the moment now. So when when he made that speech. Um, and um, it was largely a scripted speech, but he went, he went off script and said, I, I'm going to walk with you to the Capitol. And um, um, all of the aides around him said, what? Um, and it was, not, it was not first and foremost that they didn't have the security prepared for that. It was first and foremost, what is he talking about? Donald Trump never walks anywhere. So again, it is absolutely in the moment. And do the events that you describe in your book for sure ensure that Trump can never be president again? No, not, not, not in the least. I mean, so one of the other things that you, one of the other issues that you have here is this extraordinary juxtaposition. You have, you have the gang that couldn't sh shoot straight, the gang that is supported by none of of his closest supporters, um, a situation in which virtually everyone around Trump, we're not talking Democrats here, we are talking Trump aides, intimates, and supporters, everyone believes he has, he has gone off his rocker. Um, well, I mean, let's not, um, uh, in, uh, um, um, uh, let's not make a, put a too fine a point here. They believe he is crazy. At the same time, he commands a, um, if not a majority of the country, a very, very substantial minority comes to believe that this election is stolen and whose support for him ever hardens. Well, uh, Michael Wolf, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.